Let's pray together. God, thank you for your holy word that you express to us in any number of ways. You express it through the writing of the ancients who followed you who, and collected those writings as the Holy Bible. And we thank you for the way that you speak to us directly in our hearts by that Holy Spirit's still small voice. And we thank you for the way that you speak through the gift of music as folks give of their time to practice and then present your word to us. And so as we interact with your word here today, we thank you for what you are teaching us and we thank you for the way you're helping us and healing us and guiding us and everything else that you have planned for this worship service, Lord. We thank you that you think highly enough of us to give us your attention and to speak your word to us today. So as we pause in this place, interact with your word directly, one-to-one -one, and as a group to you, would you move in our midst in the stillness of this place and help us to know that you're here and that you're listening to us as we pray to you. You're good, man. You're good. I need, need some help um, because kids, I want to make sure you get one of these yellow pieces of paper. And if you need a pen, you can have one of these pens. So, um, kids, can I? Have, can you guys help pass these around a little bit? Uh, anybody? Anybody? Yep. Here we go. Awesome. So, um, and I'll let them define whether they're a kid or not. Okay. Yellow piece of paper and a pen. All right. Yeah. If the kids want to come up and grab them, that's cool too. Ooh, that's that's efficiency. That's efficiency right there. I like it. Yeah. That's fine. It's totally cool. Totally cool. Yeah. Yeah. Give them to, to any of the kids. All right. Just, just kind of walk up and down through there. And if you're a kid or a kid at heart, you can be like, oh, I wanted a bright yellow piece of paper. That's cool. That's fine. Just go ahead and track them down. That'll be really, really good. All right. And we'll do this again here in a minute because I've got, I've got all kinds of cool stuff to give you. The green sheets you can fill out and put in the offering plates here in a little bit, right? And uh, let us know that you're here. And if you missed um, one of the yellow sheets, you can write that on the green sheet. Hey, I wanted a yellow one. It's fine. So we're going to talk about um, something called attitude. And, um, you know, in this whole time where we're refreshing ourselves and we're trying to say, okay, I want to get back in line with what God wants. 
we as a church, we want to have that fresh wind of the Holy Spirit in our hearts so that we as one family of God, one, one congregation here, regardless of whether in the future we need two services or five services or whatever, you know, that's, that's irrelevant. We are one family of God right here as one congregation. We're getting a refreshed view of what that looks like so we can go forward strong together. In the midst of all that, attitude becomes an absolutely key part of what we're going to do in the scripture that we're going to look at today in the book of Luke goes right along with that. Goes right along with that. So, um, so the first thing that I'm going to invite the kids to write down is the word attitude on, uh, on their piece of paper. Um, in the first service, we, we had some controversy as to how to spell attitude. And I don't care, you know, if you want to do it phonetically, that's totally fine. But I want you to write attitude down. And I have a microphone, and I'm going to let one of the kids give us a definition. Now, this is, this is like some serious stuff right here. This is kind of intimidating to speak like in front of everybody. But I bet somebody could define it. What is attitude? Somebody under the age of 18, can you tell me what is attitude? I've even got a microphone. Who is brave? Who is brave? What is this? What, what does attitude mean? Anybody want to venture a guess? Even as I walk back here, some of the adults are like, don't call me. <laughs> attitude. Attitude. Wow, this is going to be a really educational time right here. You know? Attitude. All right. What if I had a bad attitude? What if I had a bad attitude? Yeah. Oh, did you guys run out of paper? No, you got it. All right. Good deal. Bad attitude. All right. Let's ask it like this. Hey, kids, how many of your parents had a bad attitude on the way to church today? <laughs> oh! <laughs> how about that? So, yeah, so we'll give out some candy like that, all right? So, uh, you know, um, I have some special gifts here that we're going to do because it's Trunk or Treat Day, and uh, my father-in-law is helping me to be all ready for Trunk or Treat. Oh, 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 I didn't mean to throw all these on the ground. I'll get those here in a second. Okay, so let's see here. I know you said, um, you ready? That you, uh, oh, terrible. Oh, thank you, Fritz, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, so we're going to inc increase the attitude quality here today, okay? So that's perfect. All right, she missed it, didn't she? Watch this. It's going to go on top. Oh, very good. Very good. Yeah, you got to watch, yeah. All right, so um, attitude, attitude, attitude. There are two people in this particular story, and people thought the Pharisee was the good guy, the tax collector was the bad guy, but, it, but they got it backwards in this particular story. Some of you know this story. A Pharisee, if you imagine me with a bunch of fancy robes and stuff on and, and you know, like little tassels and then this, this thing over my head that I would carry and I might have had some stuff on my arms and stuff to remind me to be holy, that would be a Pharisee because in teaching about God and people are like, ooh, there's a holy guy. And, you know, you can tell by what I'm wearing and stuff. And when I go to the temple, everybody's like, hey, what's up, what's up? You know, because they know me. The tax collector collected what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the first service, we have a, a lady who is a tax collector. And she's like, I hate that story in the Bible, you know, on the wedding, because everybody's like, ooh, we hate tax collectors. But this is this time, the tax collector is actually a hero. Now, we know tax collectors, back in the day, if you owed a dollar to Caesar, they might have said, well, wait a second, you owe $21. And what they do with the 20 They keep it for themselves. That's exactly right. And then tell Caesar, yeah, I got your money, you know, we're good. So some of them were slime balls, and so a lot of people didn't like them. Oh, is that an okay thing to say in church? I don't know. I wouldn't say that in Bible study. But oh, well, all right. So you all understand. They thought the tax collectors were bad people. We're going to look at this particular story. Luke, Luke chapter 18, verses 9 to 17. Jesus told this story to some who had great confidence in their own righteousness and scorned everyone else. That's a bad that's exactly right. Bad attitude. This Pharisee's tag on it. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee, the other was a tax collector who was despised, a despised tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself 
and prayed this prayer. I thank you, God, that I am not like other people, cheaters and sinners and adulterers. I'm certainly not a lot like that tax collector there in the back. I fast twice a week and I give you a tenth of my income. That means he was following what the religious people were supposed to do. And he was proud of it. I give away 10%. Now, it doesn't say this, but he was probably well off enough he could have given 50%. He doesn't want to give 50. I just want to give 10, right? Because that makes me a good person. And he looks down on the tax collector. But the tax collector, verse 13, stood at a distance and dared not lift his eyes to heaven as he prayed. And we talked about this a little bit last week. If you wanted to be humble and beg God for forgiveness or ask God for something really important, in that culture, you would... Put yourself down on the ground and have kind of your face down on the ground and just and sometimes even cry. God, I'm sorry. God, help, help my little daughter to be okay. You know, just pouring out your heart. That's the way the tax collector prayed. And people would have been like, oh. number one, what's he doing in there worshiping God? We didn't think he liked God. And number two, why is he like humbling himself? We'll talk about humble in just a second. So the Pharisee's like, ah, oh, I'm great. And the tax collector's like, oh, I am not. I am. And here's what, what he does. He beat his chest in sorrow. He's so sad. He says this, oh God, be merciful to me, for I am a sinner. Except it would have been more like this. God, ah, oh, be merciful to me. I'm a sinner. I'm so bad. I'm so sorry. Jesus says, I tell you, this sinner, the tax collector, not the Pharisee, returned home justified before God. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Let me pause there for a second. Justified. The tax collector, who was like, I'm so sorry, I'm a sinner, went home with God happy with him. Justified means now you are right with God. You know, if one time I hid the checkbook from my mom and dad, they looked all over the house for it, and I was in trouble. I was a sinner. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious because they were all looking for it. I didn't realize that they were worried that somebody had stolen it, and now we're going to be out of money, and it was going to be really, really bad. I got in big, 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 big time trouble for it, and I wasn't justified until I went and I got the checkbook, and I brought it back, and I said, hey, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then got in trouble a little more, and then we were good. Then I was justified, right? I was justified. I made it right. The tax collector makes it right by humbling himself. He's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The Pharisee didn't go home justified. God wasn't happy with him. Why? Because he's like bragging about how good he is compared to the other guy when he wasn't that good. His heart wasn't right. So verse 15. One day some parents brought their little children to Jesus so he could touch them and bless them. Whoa! That's a different, this is a different thing going on, right? But Luke, the writer of these stories of Jesus, as he's like doing the biography of Jesus, puts these back to back. You'll see why. Some, some parents are trying to bring the little children to Jesus. But the disciples of Jesus saw this and they scolded the parents. Don't do that. They scolded the parents for bothering Jesus. Verse 16. Then Jesus called the, the little children up to him and said to the disciples, let the little children come to me. Don't stop them, for the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these little children. I tell you the truth, anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. Wow. Ah, in that picture, hopefully you can see, you know, some of the kids are, are like, wow, like, this is, this is really cool to be with Jesus. And remember, some of the adults didn't think it was cool to be with Jesus. They got so mad at him that they tried to throw him off a cliff one time. Later on, they lie about him, they get him arrested and killed on a cross. Like some of the adults got it wrong, and some of the kids were like, no, don't do that to Jesus. Jesus is awesome. Like, I feel really, really loved when I'm with Jesus. Why? Because he's the Son of God. I believe it's the book of Hebrews that says Jesus is the exact representation of God. If you're a kid and you're in, you get to see face to face the exact representation of God, that's even better than seeing like your favorite Cleveland, Cleveland Indian player or your favorite Cub or LeBron James or something like that. I mean, that'd be cool to see those people, you know, your, your, your ultimate star, your favorite Olympic swimmer, you know, oh, this is amazing. But seeing Jesus, God, like face to face, like that's like way better. 
And the kids were excited. They got excited about that. And the adults were like, wait, this is not kid stuff. Get those kids away. It doesn't make any sense. Like, I would have wanted to take my kids there. And when the disciples said that, I'd be like, oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> you know, I'm going to take my kids and let them meet Jesus face to face. That's what we want to do. Now, do you see the, the difference of attitudes there? Oh, I get these kids away. That sounds kind of like the Pharisee. I'm so good and holy. This is for me, not for that tax collector. That tax collector's a sinner. They shouldn't be around God. Those kids, they don't understand, and they're too rowdy. They shouldn't be around Jesus. You see, the, you see what Luke's doing, putting these two together? And he's reminding people, hey, wait a second, be humble. So kids, on the, on the yellow sheet, on the yellow sheet, how do you write the, 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 the word humble, okay? I've talked with kids of different ages, even up into their teens, who had no idea what the word humble meant. No joke. Because that, kind of the playground and stuff, that's not always, like, really looked on as, oh yeah, wow, that kid's so humble. How great. I want to be his friend, right? You know, it's more like, wow, that kid thinks he's just awesome, so, you know, everybody wants to go hang out with that kid, you know? It's like, wait a second. But Jesus had it the other way around. Humble. How do you spell that? How do you spell that? Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. These are really good. <laughs> How do you spell it? H U M B L E. You got it right, brother. There you go. Actually, I gave you two. There's scripture on those. That's pretty cool. I like it. I like it. I like it. Do some people say humble instead of humble? Do you maybe say it like that? You ever heard people say that? No. Humble. That's what the tax collector was. How did he pray? Was he like this? God, I'm great. Thanks for making me so much better than those other sinners that go to Columbiaites. Oh, oh, man. Am I glad I'm not like them. Is that humble? No, no, it's not humble. Humble's like, God, thank you for loving me because I, there are times I don't deserve it. I've done things that if those other people at Columbia Heights knew that I did, they wouldn't want to sit next to me. And I just, I thank you. Thanks for loving me. Thanks for forgiving me. I'm, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't believe that I still do that or I think that. Oh, Lord, I'm so sorry. And then God's like, look, now that you have a humble heart, I'll lift you up. I'm going to help you to help other people. Some of the great best people in the Bible were, what was the word I used for earlier? Slime balls? Some of them like killed people. You know, Moses got mad at a guy and killed him. And that wasn't okay. It wasn't. But then eventually his heart was changed and he was good with God. And he was like, I'm sorry, you know, and God's like, I will use you now to lead my people. It changed me. So, um, humble. What's the opposite of humble? Somebody just yell it out. Bragger. Kids, kids. What's the opposite of humble? What? Bragger. I like that. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There was a couple. You what was it? Arrogant. I like that. How many of you are arrogant? Sometimes, you know, a couple of you are like, yeah, sometimes, you know, that's okay. Um, yeah. So now we get, to, we get to the real heart of it. God loves us and thinks very, very, very highly of us. And, and if we don't understand that and accept that, then we may just think that we're always like as low as a worm. Now, this is not meant to make you feel bad about yourself. But some of you out there already feel bad about yourself. And what you need to know is that God loves you. And when you admit God, I, I don't feel good about myself and I think I've done some bad things. He forgives you. I'm sorry. He forgives you. Amen. Are you sure? I am as well. So as we pray, that's what we're going to look at. We, we want to be more like the guy on the right. Guys, would you go to that final slide where it's got a picture of Jesus with the kids? As we grow closer to Christ, I pray that the people around us will see us more like that, where we're excited to be around the kids, even to be around people that, you know, other people may say, wow, look down on them, they're sinners. But you know that the sinners like being around Jesus. Isn't that weird? 
like some of the worst people still like being around Jesus. Because even though Jesus was very clear, God's willing to judge people into hell. When the sinful people were like, wait, but if I turn, am I going to be okay? Jesus is like, duh, yeah, absolutely, turn, turn back to the Lord, and I will welcome you into my family and into the kingdom of God. That was awesome, and people got excited about it. I pray that we will have that kind of heart for other people and receive that kind of hope from the Lord. Let's pray. Jesus, we love you. We put ourselves into your care. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to love others like you love the little kids and like you love the tax collector. Help us to love other people in that kind of way. In Jesus' name, amen.